Hello, my name is Lori Rubin. I'm with Viewbug, and I've got a very special guest today, Joshua Halko, and he's going to be talking about some of his beautiful images, as you can see on the screen. And also, he recently did a photo contest with Viewbug, Wanderers. So we're going to talk about why he picked the grand jury winner and some of the runner-ups. So it's really a great way to see insight into a judge's mind, what they're looking for in a winning photo. So Joshua, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Laurie. It's wonderful to be here, and thanks for having me. Great. Well, let's just start out. We're going to take a look at some of your beautiful images. So we're going to go to your portfolio, and um, we'll just, I don't know, do you have a particular one you want to kind of go through? Any of these particular? Well, you know, I, I, specialize, I specialize in polar photography, so let's, let's start with something polar. What about, let's go down to Svalbard, because not a lot of people know about Svalbard. Oh, haven't heard of that either. Okay. Love polar bears. Okay, fantastic. So why is this, yeah. why is this the, your passion here, uh, photographing polar bears? Yeah, well, my passion is really polar photography, so anything to do with ice, icebergs or, or Arctic or Antarctic wildlife. And there's just something about the quality of light that we get, you know, in the polar regions that we just don't get anywhere else. It's soft, it's ethereal, and, and the, um, the animals are living in a very difficult environment. So there's a lot of drama there, and, and I just I like to capture that drama in my photographs. It must be awfully cold. <laughs> it can be cold. Actually, there's no such thing as cold. There's just bad clothing. <laughs> this image, when I saw it, just made me stop in my tracks. It just, um, boy, does that tell a story. Absolutely yeah, fantastic. That, that's something I try to do with my photography a lot, is, is to try and tell a story and to try and you know, present emotion in the photograph. And, and for someone to stand in front of or have a feeling about the photograph it usually means it's, it's a successful image. Yeah, that's just fantastic. Wow. It just, uh, I don't think I've ever seen anything quite, I mean, that dramatic, you know, with the, the blood on his face, just, you know, against all that white. It's very, very dramatic. This is gorgeous. It's really interesting to see the, to see the difference in, in wildlife between, say, the Arctic and Antarctic. You know, in Antarctica, you've got this plethora of wildlife. It's just everywhere. You've got penguins and there's, there's thousands of them. Whereas in the Arctic, it's a very different type of experience and there's much more of a sense of struggle for life. Mm. Which is your favorite? What do you prefer? Oh boy, they're both so different. Look, I think if I was forced to choose, I'd probably say the Arctic. You know, my, my two favorite subjects to photograph are really polar bears and, and Arctic foxes. Oh. And um, so, yeah, I, if, if you press me, I'll say the Arctic, but they're both pretty special. <laughs> That's just fantastic. Wow. Yeah, your images really evoke a lot of emotion. Uh, I really feel like you're there. Yeah, that's something that I think is really, really important in photography is to try and, and, and generate an emotional response in the viewer. You know, it's not enough just to have a pretty picture. And photography is really a subtractive process. So quite often what we exclude is more important than what we include. So when I'm framing a shot and I'm looking to produce an image, I'm always looking for what I can take away, just to, to simplify and distill it down to really capture the essence of the, of, uh, of the subject. Yeah, these are just beautiful. So Joshua, you do workshops. Uh, is that I do a certain time of year? Yeah, I do. Actually, I do them all year round, um, and it's really uh, quite a large part of my um, of my business these days. Is to and I do them mostly again in the polar regions. So it's mostly in the Arctic or Antarctic, but also places like Iceland and Greenland. Uh, also in New Zealand. I just came back from New Zealand a week ago uh, from two back to back workshops there, and I also do a few in Tasmania as well, uh, as well as Yellowstone in the U.S. Um, and various other places as well. Oh, this is just incredible. Wow. Um, I photograph wildlife myself, so I, I have a deep appreciation for a really good wildlife photographer. <laughs> so these are just wonderful. Thank you for letting us see your portfolio here. That's fantastic. So everyone, yeah, you should uh, go and see his website. You can see right here, uh, jhalko.com, and you can take a look at some of his upcoming workshops. Uh, and also he has a book and an ebook on there as well and a blog. So take a look at some of his beautiful imagery. It's just fantastic. Okay, so Joshua, you were the judge for the Wanderers contest. And what did that title mean to you? What were you looking for in these types of images? Well, you know, that's a really great question because I get to judge a lot of different photographic competitions. And one of the things that I really take notice of is what the brief is. So what, what is it that somebody's trying to say about the photograph to, that matches the brief? And that really, to me, is one of the key elements to getting an image, if you like, into the finals. If, 
technically, if everything else is correct in, and right with the photograph, does the photograph meet the brief? And this particular image, it certainly meets the brief. We have that feeling of the wanderer. And I like this image the moment it came up and I saw it for the first time. It's a strong image. There's lots of drama going on, uh, especially with the movement in the clouds. And that's something that I think is really important in still photography, is to try and give a sense of movement, because it is a still medium, and it's a very difficult thing to do. So the use of a long exposure here has really helped this image. I like the human element, uh, both for scale and, again, to help meet the brief. Well, what I found with this image, and uh, the reason I didn't award it, was I found it, did, it didn't leave me wanting more. It, it was a lovely image uh, to look at, but I felt that there was there's more that could have been done here. A little bit more left to the imagination would have really worked for me. Now, this was actually uh, the People's Choice Award. And then, um, Joshua, you had a couple that you selected as runner-up. So we're going to take a look at this one by Joshua Lopez. Tell us what you found in this one, what really caught your eye. Uh, straight away, this screamed to me, um, you know, that it met the brief, and it met the brief in full. You know, that um, I like the way the person has been placed pretty much in center, breaking, breaking a standard rule. But when I looked at this image, I thought, wow, what a, what a great image that could easily be used for, you know, some sort of advertisement. It reminded me of like a Nike advertisement to just keep on running. Mm -hmm. I like the way the, the runner has been framed by the trees. Uh, in a very difficult lighting situation. Uh, there's good depth to the image as well with a, a strong leading line of the road taking me through the photograph as well. So my eye is very nicely drawn through the image. And I find there's a sense of mystery to this. Uh, you know, running on a cold, misty morning, uh, it's that sort of feeling and impression to me. It's quite evocative. So I, I thought it was a very strong image. Yeah, it's really interesting. I mean, you've got these really dark tones, but your eye really goes to this wanderer, right? <laughs> this woman who's wandering yeah. into the light. So, yeah, yeah. it's really nice. So I thought it meant the brief very, very well. That's great. I'm There's quite often a temptation, you know, with these kind of competitions, or any competition actually, to just look to dramatic color. But that last image we looked at, it's a really good example where muted, softer color can really work well. Yeah, definitely. Very nice. Okay, now we're going to take a look at um, another one. This is one of Joshua's runner-ups, uh, Wildlife. It's called Wildlife Moments. That's who did this. <laughs> and let me go ahead and pull this up for you. Okay, well, let's talk about this one. Yeah, this is another fantastically strong photograph. I think it's been very well conceived so and very well um, seen. So someone's come up with a concept and then had to go and execute it. And this would not have been an easy photograph to do. Uh, there's a lot of dynamic range going on between the deep shadows and the, and the, and the bright highlights. I still get that feeling uh, very strongly that this meets the brief. Uh, this could be, it looks like somewhere very remote uh, and, and um, you know, it's perhaps in some tucked away corner of the world. Uh, I like the long exposure for the stars and the, and the Milky Way there. And then again, the use of the person for scale, uh, I think, to help illuminate the rock wall. It's, it's a successful photograph. It meets the brief very well. Yeah. It would have been a really, you know, a great picture or image without the, that person, but putting that person in there, it just adds a whole new dimension to this. It gives the human element and it, and it adds a sense of scale, and that's, that's really important. So often a sense of scale gets lost um, because we have, you know, the eye has nothing to compare it to. We really wouldn't know how big this cave was without someone being in the middle there. Right. Yeah, that's great. All right, Joshua, we're going to take a look at the grand jury winner. This is the image that you selected out of the many images that were presented to you. <laughs> so tell us what, why this particular image out of all those other images, what made you decide this was the winning image? It's a very good question. And you know what? This is the image out of all the images I looked at that had the, I had the strongest emotional response to. It's, uh, I get that feeling of a warm summer's day wandering in the wheat field. I think it's been beautifully framed photographers just left enough for the imagination to leave me wanting to know more about this scene. I get that, that sense of warm afternoon light uh, and wandering peacefully and tranquility in the field. And you know, photography so often is about being a, it's about simplicity, it's about what we exclude rather than what we include, and it's about leaving something to the imagination. And when you do that, it helps make the um, photograph, it makes the photograph much stronger and creates much more emotive uh, feeling. So when I look at this, it conjures up that warm afternoon, sunny, you know, sunny day, and uh, a pleasant stroll through the wheat field. And I think the cropping has really, really helped this image. So I get that it meets the brief, 
uh, and um, beautifully, uh, beautifully framed and beautifully shot, well executed. Definitely. Yeah, the cropping is very interesting. That's not normally how you'd see a crop or even the diagonal. It's kind of on a slight diagonal, but it all works. It does. It really does all work. And I think that's what's so clever about the way this photograph has been put together is the fact that, you know, we don't get to see the face of the person. Uh, even the way her hand is positioned, just gently rolling across the top of the wheat, I think is uh, fantastically evocative. That's great. So, Joshua, if you could give um, a word of advice to those folks who are entering these photo contests as a judge, is there something that really is important to you as a judge when you're scrolling through all these different images? Uh, what you might be able to tell them that might help them to <laughs> win one of these contests or at least get in the finalist category? Yeah, look, I think, I think that's a fantastic thing to discuss. I think when you're looking at our own, when we're looking at our own photography, it's really important to be objective, to try and be as objective as we can and to look at it and say, well, does it really tell a story? You know, does it, is it going to evoke an emotional response in the judge? And it's not just about having super saturated color uh, to try and catch the judge's eye. It's much, much more about looking to see something that perhaps the judge hasn't seen before and interpreting, interpreting a brief in a way that might be a little bit beyond the normal. So, you know, rather than sort of the standard cliche sunset image, looking for something that perhaps meets the story in another way that perhaps someone else hasn't considered before. Because as a judge, we get to see a huge number of photographs. And, you know, we've, we, whatever the image might be from a famous location, we've probably seen it. Uh, so it's a very good idea to try and interpret a brief um, in a different way and just show the judges something unique and if you execute it well it'll always do well. That's great. Well Joshua thank you so much for letting us into your world of photography for a few moments here. <laughs> that's all right. If I'll just add one last thing if I may and that's you know I think the standard of the work that I'm seeing come through in these competitions is really really high and um, it's very good work and you know we should just make a note that Although there can only be one winner and, and a number of finalists, there were actually a lot of very good photographs. Absolutely. Thank you for adding that. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Laurie.